Hello, welcome to Vicky Makes and Builds. Okay, so today I have another Cloudberries puzzle for you. And the purpose behind this video um, specifically is to talk about how I go about tackling areas of solid colour in puzzles. Now, a long time ago, like ages ago, I got a comment from somebody and I can't remember who it was. I did try and find the comment, but I just couldn't find it. It was kind of too long ago. Um, but somebody asked me um, if I would consider doing a video on um, how I tackle areas of solid colour. And um, actually, I bought this puzzle in order to do that very thing and I'm only just now getting round to it. So, the puzzle is called Skyline and it's a Cloudberries puzzle as I said, it's a thousand pieces and um, Cloudberries uh, on their website put it in like the challenging category of puzzles that they do and I can see why. Um, so if I show you a kind of a close-up of the image, it's quite dark and there's obviously um, sort of a lots of sort of neon colours coming from these big buildings and skyscrapers and things like that but there's also um, quite a lot of dark areas of sky and a fair bit of dark areas of water and I do think that those areas you know they can potentially be quite difficult to do. Um, so the way I'm going to structure this video is I'm not going to like review the puzzle. Um, I've done a few Cloudberries puzzles and um, you know the box is kind of the same layout and format and the puzzle quality would I would imagine be the same. If it is different then I'll mention that but um, I'm not going to kind of go over those aspects too much. What I'm really focusing on in this one is the build of the puzzle and how I actually go about it um, and in, with particular emphasis on the solid colour blocks in the puzzle. So I hope that this video helps. Um, you know, if you happen to be doing a puzzle at the moment with blocks of solid colour in, um, and I hope that you enjoy. I'm going to just take the lid off <laughs> really slowly, and um, and I'm going to get all the pieces emptied into the box. Uh, go. So that's that. And a bit of a rummage. Make sure the pieces don't go all over the place. Um, the pieces are, look just as good quality as all the other Cloudberries ones I've done. Nice and thick. It's blue, kind of grey blue cardboard at the back. Nice matte finish. Um, so this is, this is going to be another good fun Cloudberries experience I think. So uh, for this for this one, I'm going to sort the puzzle, um, and I'm going to uh, just have a strategy as I go. Um, obviously, the dark colours will go in their own pile, and I suspect they will be like the biggest, um, the biggest pile, uh, the dark kind of solid colours. Um, but I can see very very vague sort of shading to them almost like a gradient although quite how much that's going to help me I can't say at the moment um, but I'll be starting with the sorting and then from there I'll kind of take you through what my next step would be but by and large and I think that will be the case with this puzzle um, by and large I tend to do solid colour areas last or whatever the hardest area I think is going to be I will do it last always do it last. Um, that's my first real piece of advice in this video, that's my first kind of tip. Um, build everything else around it first and that way you um, that way you make it just that little bit easier um, rather than trying to kind of tackle it first and not really having anything else to work with or any kind of framework to work with within. So um, that would be my first tip for solid colour areas. But I think, yeah, we'll just get on with the sorting and we'll take it as it comes. So I've sorted all the pieces and I've done a 
pretty detailed sort with this one actually um but there are still some quite large piles um i'll just go through them and i'll sort of explain uh roughly what order i would like to do them in as i go along um starting at the top this one here is pieces with like lots of yellow in and there weren't too many of those so i think that they will all probably go kind of in the same spot that's a nice small pile that's the moon those pieces there um these pieces are quite um oh dear that doesn't belong in there these pieces are quite sort of obvious as well these are all the like the tails from the airplanes uh that's the edge pieces um just incidentally with the edges a lot of these pieces are dark um so i'm going to approach the edges the same way i would approach the solid color pieces which is to leave them and not do them at the start mostly i prefer to do the edge first and i know a lot of people do um but there are just so many solid color pieces here i could probably put them together um, but I just think I'd be making life a bit more difficult for myself, really. A, a middle ground would be maybe to put together these ones with splashes of colour on. Um, but, you know, I'm not so committed to doing the edge first that I really feel the need to do that. I'm going to just leave those um, till later on. There's some nice little pile. It's got some um, pieces with green in. Um, come to those last. These two piles here are quite similar um that's like pinky orangey pieces and this is kind of it's got pinky oranges on but there's more darker purples on here there may be some overlap so this is potentially two piles i would tackle at the same time this one i could sort further i sort of realized i was going along that i had a lot of these pieces with the lines on that belong to the sails on the boats um so if i really wanted to go detailed i could pull those out and sort further but for me personally it'll probably make it quicker um and you know help if um there's ever kind of a struggle but for me um it's not a big enough pile for me to be sort of worried that i'm going to become overwhelmed by so i'm just going to leave it like that and put them together um and this pile here, this is a little bit big. This could maybe do with some further sorting. I realised as I was doing this, that there's a lot of light blue, kind of neon blue in the picture. And I was throwing neon blue pieces in here and it was just getting bigger and bigger and bigger. So this might be one that I will come back to and sort a little further. But again, big pile, um, lots of pieces here. So I will leave that till nearer to the end. Um, these two pieces, these two pieces, these two piles here are the solid colour pieces. Now, what I've done is I've separated pieces that are predominantly solid colour, but have a little bit of tiny detail on them. And it could be really teeny tiny. Um, try and find one. So like that. It's a predominantly solid colour piece, but there's just that little tiny blob. Uh, same here little line there some are even solid color but you can see little stars on them like that one um so really the reason i've done that and not just thrown them in this pile of just purely solid color pieces is to narrow down my options because i know that by the time i get to these pieces if the pile was these two pieces mixed together it would be quite big and perhaps a little bit um a little bit more difficult to tackle whereas if I separate out anything with even tiny details on it and tackle those first, it just makes that easier. So that would really be my second tip, aside from leaving this, the harder parts till last. Um, my second tip would be to narrow down your options as much as you can. Um, and this is one of the ways I've done that with this puzzle, just to take away any that will likely be a tran like kind of a transition piece between where the buildings are and where the sky is. And you'll just fill in more of the gaps and you'll have less pieces to go out when you come to do these harder um, piles of pieces. So yeah, just narrowing down the options and probably the same with that, uh, like doing a resort on that pile narrows down the options a little bit as well. So my strategy moving forward would be to start with the really obvious piles of pieces. So I think like the moon, that'll go together pretty quick. The tails on the aeroplanes, I'll be tackling those first then maybe greens and these yellows. 
um, and just work my way up, probably moving on to the sales uh, at that point. So yeah, it's, it's sometimes, mostly I start with the smaller piles. Sometimes an obvious pile isn't necessarily smaller. Um, but you know, it all kind of goes in the same place, so that makes it easier. Uh, but in this case, they are the smaller piles that I'm going to start with. So the moon, the aeroplane kind of tails coming out the back, the greens and the yellows. And I'm going to make a start on those just now. So here is progress so far, and I think the next step for me now will be to head over to this pile of blue pieces um, with a blue building on. And I think what I'm going to do first is like a mini resort where I pull out all the pieces with pink on um, and just try and slot them into here because there's starting to be a bit of overlap with pink meeting blue. Um, so I'm going to do that and hopeful that that will um, narrow it down a bit and then probably pick out like this kind of texture with the stripes um, and just kind of try and whittle this pile down until it's in the puzzle, basically. Um, so, yeah, so that's my next uh, task to do those. And then I'll probably do the edges after that, or at least the edges with the colour on. Um, before I head over to the only other two piles, which is the solid colour piles. So um, it's really coming along, this puzzle, and it's really enjoyable. I love the colours of it. All these really bright kind of neon colours. I think it's really lovely. Um, and I'm I'm thoroughly enjoying every minute of it. So, um, yeah, I'm just going to move over to this blue pile now, start kind of doing a bit of mini sorts with it and starting by pulling out all the bits with pink on. Okay, so I've almost got through all of those uh, sort of blue pieces. So this is the remaining ones here, which I've just sort of neatened up, really. Uh, so I can kind of just glance at them and see better which one I need. But I mean, I've kind of come to the point now where I've slowed down a bit. And rather than just laboriously try and put all of these pieces in before I move on, um, I'm going to now move on to the next pile of pieces, which is this one here. And these are the pieces that I mentioned that are mostly solid colour, but have just tiny bits of detail to them. And I really think that's going to fill out a lot of these water areas and some of the darker bits of the buildings and things. What I've also done is I have... Um, just how do we shuffle through the edge pieces? Because I was very aware that this piece 
uh, wasn't anywhere to be found and I was starting to worry a little bit. So I thought I would just ease my mind a bit and have a look, see if I'd missorted it. And it turned out that I have. So there it is. They were in, it was in the edge pieces. So that's that one. So all good so far, not going too badly at all. So my next step is now, um, I'll probably put a bunch of edge pieces in as well, but my main next step now is to go through these. Um, and this pile is kind of part of the whole tip that I gave about narrowing down options. So, you know, just making it so that you've not got that big pile there plus that pile um and really just when you find pieces even with small details on some of them have got a bit more detail on but some of them have just got tiny little bits um so yeah so that that's what the hard part's really going to come when i've put all these in and then hopefully all these as well and i will have only these left to do so um I'll kind of do a bit more explaining when I come to that, but uh, for now, I'm gonna just get on with this part here. Okay, so there's a few different blocks of solid colour in this puzzle, kind of scattered about, mostly up in the sky, a little bit at the bottom and um, some down here. So in the spirit of trying to narrow down my options, uh, what I've done is I've, I've had a look at these pieces and the, the most obvious way I can narrow things down a bit as to where they go in the puzzle is with this particular puzzle um, by colour gradation. So just looking at this pile of pieces from this angle, I can see there are quite light blues, that one, or lightish, and there are darker ones like these, and there are some that are almost black, like that one there. So I think, I mean, I've already... I've already just done a brief shuffle through and found a bunch with kind of just vague areas of pink on them and I put those in pretty quickly. Um, I've sorted the edge pieces by shape here and I'm just going to leave those there because as much as I've managed to put some in, trying to put the rest together just would be pointless really. I just I think it's probably going to be easier to just try and fill out these gaps where you've got three sides of the you know, piece to match it to, three sides to match it to, and, you know, do areas like that, little gaps here and things like that, and just build it outwards. And then I think the edge would be more logical to do last. <clears throat> so what I'm going to do now is I'm going to grab some pieces of paper, um, it's just A4 paper, and I'm going to separate these pieces um, into just kind of different um, shades of blue. So I'm going to pull out the lighter ones and the darker ones, and if there's any more kind of gradations that I can see from doing it, I'll make a separate pile for those. So I'm going to do that just now and I will explain my method from there. Okay, so here's how I've sorted the pieces. That pile there are the lightest coloured pieces that I could find. Um, and that's fairly small, but, you know, it's a good size pile to go at. That pile there is sort of darker than those ones, but they've got more of a blue tinge to them. Unlike this pile here, which is kind of medium purple, really, and that makes up the most of these pieces. That pile there is pieces that are predominantly black or just very dark purple. And there's also some pieces in here where you can see, I don't know if you can really tell on this footage, but there's like a shadowed area here. So presumably that would go next to a building. There's um, a piece here with a very dark kind of line on the left hand edge. So I've separated that out. I'm assuming they will go next to buildings or somewhere like that. Um, so the, the idea behind this is that once I've done and put in all these little piles, I will effectively have turned the 
large pile of solid colour pieces into a much smaller pile of solid colour pieces, which is likely going to be this one. I'll probably tackle this last. And I suspect that they will all go up in the sky area. Some might go down in the corners, but mostly I think they'll be up at the top. Um, and then by that point, what I will likely do, uh, by the time I reach these, what I'll likely do is start to sort by shape. I'll kind of cross that bridge when I come to it, but um, I will more than likely sort by shape at that point. Um, but I'm just going to leave the pieces on these pieces of paper so that um, I can see them better um, because it's a white background and they're dark pieces. Um, that could be another tip if you're sorting um, all one colour piece. If they're quite light in colour, you can maybe get a dark surface to... Um, put them on so you just the contrast is more striking you can see things better um or alternatively if you've got dark pieces and put them on a white surface i mean i found that handy for this because the gradations and the colors are so slight on occasion that you know you can't always tell um so just having that contrast is really quite useful um so anyway i'm going to start with with these lighter colored pieces um well, I'll maybe, I'll maybe pick back and forth, but I'm definitely starting with the darks, the lighter ones and the, the kind of the bluey shaded ones and these two here. And I will be leaving those till last. So I'm just going to put all those in just now. The more. Okay, so that's all the small piles in. So all I have left now are these. So what I'm going to do now is I'm going to sort these by shape and I'm going to lay them out on um, pieces of paper um, so that I can see them properly. And basically, as I'm sorting them by shape, obviously I'll be sorting um, out like standard pieces like that from standard from, you know, other pieces like that. Um, but what I also want to try and be aware of when I'm doing this is orientation. So like those two pieces there um, will likely go upright. I mean, they're sort of largely squarish, so you can't always necessarily tell with a Cloudberry's puzzle, but the tendency is for the tall, narrow ones to go upright, like in a portrait orientation. So what I'm going to try, as much as I can, I'm also going to try and differentiate the orientation that they will probably go in. So that one's likely going to go that way and so forth. So this, again, this is just more narrowing down. Uh, so it's not just by shape, but also orientation. Um, and then once they're sorted into shapes, I'm going to uh, start filling in these gaps. Okay, so I've managed to finish the bottom half. Um, well, all of the bottom really in the middle is done. It's really just this top section now. And I, in the end, I sort of reached the point where I was having to um, start kind of testing pieces in the slots because I just wasn't seeing the pieces. Um, but, uh, and I'm sort of fully prepared to do that with these ones as well. But what I'm going to do uh, for the top is I'm going to, change sides i'm going to go to the other side of the table i would normally maybe just reach but because it's all one color and i need to be able to kind of see the pieces quite closely i'm going to actually just get nearer to um the actual section of the puzzle that i'm working on so i'm going to move to the other side now and try and get these pieces slotted in they're all on one piece of paper now all the standard shapes and I've just got those few on that piece of paper now. So hopefully, hopefully it won't be too laborious getting it in. But mostly where I can't discern a shade or a shape, I will then just start testing the pieces one by one um, and just doing process of elimination type uh, puzzling, I guess, um, until it is done. But thankfully, it's not too huge a section, but 
Yeah, long enough to slow me down, definitely. Okay, so that is the puzzle finished. And I would say that Cloud Bros were right. It is definitely a challenging puzzle. Um, in fact, even, you know, not just the solid color pieces, even the, the, the ones with slightly varying shades or even just tiny details on, I found those quite hard to all to get all in um, until the very end. So it was a good challenging puzzle, but I enjoyed it. And I really have just kind of gone through uh, how I would build the whole thing. But if I was to um, summarize uh, my tips for um, putting together the solid color sections, um, this is the way I would do it. Now, so bear in mind, I know everybody puzzles differently. Um, some people hate sorting, I hate sorting. I get that <laughs> completely. But, um, you know, I would still utilize methods that I wouldn't necessarily use ordinarily um, to get the puzzle done and you know without it being too frustrating a process so I'm just going to go through kind of the way I would do it and the things I would do when I'm tackling solid color sections so the first thing I would say is um, to sort the pieces it's only a thousand piece puzzle it doesn't take too long if you hate sorting again I totally understand but I just think it makes the whole process that bit more organized and methodical and when you do get around to actually doing those solid color sections, you've got a pile of pieces that you know are specific to that area and you know um, you can kind of sort um, by shape and things like that and you, you can just get them in. So, but I mean, if you don't, if you really, really don't want to sort, you can still perhaps use like a shuffle method or you could use one where you're laying them all out and turning them all over if you wanted to. But what I would say is for tip one, um, whether you sort or don't sort, leave the hard solid color pieces until last. Always leave the hardest bit until last. That's what I do. Because if you've got all the other bits in place already um, that come together a bit more easily, like, like the neon colorful buildings in this puzzle, and, you know, I found that to be perfectly fine. That wasn't too difficult at all. But once all of that was in, all the other details, it just, the whole solid colour section just didn't seem quite so daunting. It didn't seem quite so insurmountable. And I had a framework to actually put the pieces in uh, rather than just trying to do them as kind of a floating section and just struggling with it. Um, so I would say my first hint is A, to sort the puzzle. But if you really don't want to and you want to do it your own way, that's fine. But leave the dark solid colour pieces until last get everything else in first uh, so that would be my first tip uh, my second tip and this is optional uh, as well <laughs> but um i would say that if you're doing a puzzle uh, where the edge pieces are also largely solid color and again that was the case with this puzzle um to leave the edges as well don't try sort of forcing them into place so you've got this rectangle to work inside um i just think you I think that just makes the whole process quite hard. And I think that you can do the edge pieces just like you do the solid color pieces and you can leave them till the end and it's perfectly fine. I mean, if you want to partially do the edge, there were areas where there was some detail that I could put together. I did do some of the edges kind of midway through the puzzle. Um, but I, I mean, for me, again, some people really love to do the edges first. They just, you know, they just, that's how it has to be done and that is fine I probably could have done that probably could have put the edges together in the Cloudberries puzzles um there's you the, the shapes are kind of varied enough that you can kind of tell you know which one's going to go beside it 
um, either orientation, sort of which ones are going to go on the sides of the puzzles and which ones are going to go on the top of the bottom, or just kind of how big and tall the pieces are and things like that. So, you know, I could have done it that way, but I just think that would have been quite hard work. And I don't think I'd have really enjoyed that. So um, I left the edges till last. But again, it is optional. Um, it's just the way I would do it if they are solid colour as well. If they're not, great, stick them together and it's just more framework for you to put the solid colour sections in. Um, <clears throat> my third tip, and this really is something I would do just throughout the entire puzzle, as well as just doing the solid colour pieces. Um, my third tip is to narrow down your options as much as possible. So um, with Skyline, the solid colour pieces was the biggest pile, um, but by separating it out as much as I possibly could with a detailed sort, by separating out pieces with like minor subtle uh, kind of colour variations where it, there was maybe like black on one side and, and blue on the other, um, if I could spot those, if I could see them, I would separate them out. Um, any with just tiny little lights or, or little um, slivers of building on one side or in a corner, I would take those out because you know, you know they're going to go next to another bit, and ne another section, you know they're going to go next to a building or next to one of the boats or next to one of the aeroplanes. So you're not sort of just chucking them in the solid colour pile and having this huge pile that you have to tackle. You're narrowing it down so that you've not got this humongous pile that you have to deal with at the end. Um, so you can narrow it down like that. Same with when you are actually on the solid colour pieces. Um, look and see. Look and see how you can narrow it down further. Maybe, like with this one, there are some very slight colour gradations and you can perhaps sort again just get that pile smaller and smaller and smaller. I know that that, you, that won't always be the case with some solid colour puzzles. Sometimes it's just this, you know, blank blue sky and it's all the same shade of blue and things. Sometimes it might be mostly blue, but there'll be a little bit of cloud or something. So just whatever it is that you're doing, if there's any kind of variation at all, narrow it down as much as you can. So that, that would be my third tip. Um, when that ceases to be an option and there's no more narrowing down according to what you're actually seeing on the image and on the piece, then shape sort. That would be my fourth tip. Sort the pieces by shape. And when you are shape sorting, again, it's all part of the narrowing down process. When you are shape sorting, place the pieces in the orientation that you think that they will go. You won't always be able to tell. Again, it depends on the puzzle. Some puzzles have really quite obvious sort of elongated pieces um, where they're either going to go kind of landscape or they're either they're going to go portrait. Cloudberries, that's not as obvious in a Cloudberries puzzle, but it is there. And, you know, I could see patterns um, just from the bit of puzzle that I'd already done. So I was able largely to actually put them and sit them, when I'd sorted by shape, I was able largely to sit them the right way, and that's the way they would go in the puzzle. One or two, where I got it wrong, you know, you just live with that, but th I would do that because, again, you're narrowing it down. You're taking away uh, options so that you're not having to sit there just testing piece after piece after piece after piece. And I, I'm aware that will happen eventually. You know, you'll get to the point where you just won't be able to see the different sort of shapes or you, you glancing at the pieces that they just won't pop out of you. And then you are really using process of elimination, but you don't want to do that unless you absolutely have to. Um, so sort by orientation as well as shape. And when you are doing that again as well, another helpful tip is to make sure the background that you have behind your pieces is contrasting. So because this puzzle is dark, it was really handy having a white table and two white pieces of paper that I could put the pieces on. Um, if you use sorting trays, you know, maybe if you have dark ones that you can, or even if you've got a bunch of trays that are all different colours, pick a colour that contrasts the most with your pieces. So when you're glancing at them, the pieces jump out at you rather than you having to really try and kind of discern, you know, what's on them because it's kind of blending into the background of your tray or your paper. Um, so I would say if you can do that, but um, I mean, it's not mandatory again, it's sort of optional, but I think that really helps as well. It definitely helped me with this puzzle. Um, and the other thing um, I would say when you get to that point is to 
Try and recognise um, if a puzzle has certain kind of features to a piece. So, for example, in this puzzle, uh, some of the pieces had like a like a wavy kind of line to them. Not all of them. There weren't too many. But it again, it helped me to um, be able to find the pieces more at a glance instead of having to really kind of, you know, sift through them. Um, there were just some where I knew I was looking for one with this kind of unique little wavy line shape. And I knew that there was certain pieces where that was generally on that specific shape. Wasn't always the case, but I was able to get those kind of pieces in quicker because I was recognising the feature that I was after in a piece. So pay attention to, you know, when you're slotting it into a gap where you've perhaps got three edges to work with or two um, or even just one in some cases, pay attention to the features, whether it's sort of fat at the bottom or thin at the bottom or whether the the uh, tabs that stick out, whether they're slightly off centered on opposite sides or if they're in line, whether there's a little wavy line, whatever it happens to be, try and kind of be aware of the features of the puzzle piece. Um, and again, the, Cloudberry's puzzles do have that. They do have some, you know, odd little kind of quirky features to them. Uh, and I could use that to my advantage. Um, other puzzles have that quite a lot. Some puzzles are just more generic, in which case, you know, you don't really have that option. But whatever you can use to help you get the pieces in, use it. And that, I would say, is one of the things I did to help me get this one together. Um, and I've sort of touched on this tip as well, but um, when you are doing it or maybe picking a spot to start with when you're doing these solid colour puzzles. Wherever you can, work out from a corner or something or work out from an area where you've got more than one side to fit the piece against. Um, and again, it's it's just allowing you to be able to um, see better the kind of shape and um, the kind of features that you need on the piece to fit it into that gap. I would say that's easier if you've got more than one side that you're working off of. Um, so there's that. Um, and then if all else fails and none of that really is working anymore, start to do the trial and error kind of puzzling where you're just trying each different one, testing them out. But by that point, I would hope you would have um, few enough pieces for that to not be too laborious. And um, it would just come together quicker as you go along. So um, anyway, that's the way I tackle solid colour sections in puzzles. And not just solid colour, so it doesn't always have to be solid colour. Sometimes it just could be large areas of the same texture. Um, I did a puzzle once, it was a Clementoni puzzle of the Eiffel Tower in the dark. So the Eiffel Tower was all lit up and glowing, but on either side of it, there were just all these like branches silhouetted against the dark blue sky and all the branches were black and there were just loads of them it was like a web and those were two big chunks of of solid kind of textured sections where I was they weren't solid color they were textured but I just had to I ha it was hard I had to use all those methods to get those in it took quite a long time to put those together so it's not you know this works the same for textured sections where you the block of of puzzling is just all the same. So um, yeah, so they would be my tips on tackling solid colours. If you have any methods that you use that I haven't mentioned, um, by all means, please leave a comment and let me know um, so that, you know, other people can have a look and it might help them too. Um, but otherwise, I really do hope that you've enjoyed this video. I hope that you found it useful and helpful. Um, I want to thank the person who uh, left the comment um, asking, well, giving me the idea to do this video about tackling solid colour sections. I'm very, very sorry I couldn't find your comment, but hopefully you know who you are. Um, and uh, I want to thank you for that. Um, but otherwise, yeah, I hope you've enjoyed. If you have, please leave a like. And um, if you haven't subscribed to my channel yet, please consider subscribing. Um, in the meantime, I will say bye for now. Happy puzzling. And I'll see you in the next one. Bye.